Hello, how are you? Welcome to Trapping the Time. My name is Pablo, and today we're going to talk about the Citizen EcoDrive system by reviewing this wonderful ProMaster Nighthawk GMT. In addition, we're launching a new section in our videos that we're going to call Watches of the World, where today we will review the Fight One Hand, a Belarusian watch with a manual winding and a single hand full of charm and also very economical. The first thing I have to say is, whoa, what a pleasant surprise. This precious watch has arrived totally unexpectedly as a Christmas gift. A little early, I must say, since it arrived a week before Santa Claus. And also with all the intention. I'll explain. My children, who are the ones who record these videos, I only put the watches on, uh, the voice and my wrist, they do everything else. They knew that I had it in my head to make the fourth video with a citizen. To close the first videos of the channel with the four great Japanese. But of course, what I like uh, the most about the Citizen is their range of aviators. All quartz watches, be they eco drive, radio control, GPS, well, a lot of modern technologies that make me look at them with admiration but without empathy. So it was they, my children, who have solved the equation. Taking advantage of the imminent Christmas, they have advanced their gift and bought me this watch that I would surely never have bought because of that prejudice, perhaps absurd, towards quartz watches. And the truth is that I have to admit that it has totally changed my way of thinking. First of all, for the beauty of the piece, uh, a tool watch for aviators or for anyone who needs to convert miles, gallons or pounds to the metric system with a really attractive sphere that is a successful combination between the steel of the case, the ceramic of the bezel and the leather of the strap. Overall, it seems to me a very masculine and sporty watch, great as a casual watch. The second is for the functionality of this EcoDrive system. Since this watch does not use a common battery, but is powered by light, and the theory says that you can have it for weeks, months, even years in your box, and when you take hold of it, it's ready to go and right on time. Much more accurate than many mechanicals costing 10, 20, or 30 times as much. It must be recognized that on a practical level, it's unrivaled, and on top of that, it's very eco-friendly, because by not using batteries, it does not generate heavy metal waste. The third thing that brings together everything sit above is because this watch has opened my eyes and made me rethink many questions. For example, like the one that uh, gives this video its title, does anyone give more? I have to say that although it's hard for me to admit it because of my great love for mechanical watches, if what we value is functionality and value for money, it's very possible that the EcoDrive range from Citizen is one of the best deals on the market today. This Nighthawk is not only beautiful, but it's also very well made, with very good quality materials and with careful design in all its details. In addition to that, it only needs two minutes of exposure to sunlight to get a charge for a day's use. If we expose it to 11 hours, it gets a full charge to work for at least six months. The truth is that this is one of the things that was not advisable for these watches uh, to have them for long periods of time in the dark. In fact, something that I would pay close attention to when buying an EcoDrive is that it's uh, never a late model, since it's more than possible that it has spent years in storage without receiving uh, direct light exposure that it needs. In this case, it's far easier for that battery to reach us discharged or with charging problems, which will never happen in a recently manufactured EcoDrive. But it's not just powered by sunlight, also with artificial light. If it does not have the necessary energy, we will know because the second hand marks the seconds 2x2, two two, which returns to normal when we recharge it. The only maintenance that this part requires is exposing it to light over and over the years, changing the, the battery element, which works in a similar method to a car. Although we keep it at full capacity, 
over time it loses capacity burden. But hey, we're talking about many, many years. In fact, this is somewhat confusing because some citizen advertising speaks of these watches as eternal. At the moment, what we do know is that there are users who have had EcoDrive for more than 20 years and have not had to do anything with them. They continue to work like the first day and that says a lot very well about these citizen EcoDrives. Like this Promaster Nighthawk GMT that I like so much, there will be those who think that a black strap would look better and I won't take away their reason but for my taste that colour combination makes it elegant and sporty. I'm actually really glad that Citizen ditched the bracelet for this latest version of the Nighthawk and that they released it in the middle of 2020. In addition a strap of this colour with texture and finishes. I didn't have any of these. Uh, those horizontal and vertical designs and different thread colours and that finish that could seem artificial because of the silicone that they have put on the sides to protect it. But well, it's, it's good quality leather with at least two layers, black on the inside, olive green on the outside and with those stitchings and different tones, that big buckle also brushed like the box, those big holes to facilitate the closure. <laughs> You know, I just love this strap. But I also love the case, the dial, the bezel, the crowns, everything, absolutely everything about this watch. The dial, for example, combines modernity and a certain retro touch. It's not as busy as other aviators of the brand and it's characterised by perfectly legible indices that are also covered with luminescent pigment to facilitate reading it in the dark. At 12 o'clock, we see the classic triangle of large aviators, and at 3, 6 and 9, in the shape of a bar, the 3 o'clock cut out to accommodate the dater. The dater's quite small and difficult to see, by the way. I think they've moved the disc with the dates too far from the dial, and yes, it has been very cool as well as framed, but the truth is it's not easy to see. Perhaps this is the only fault that I can put on this piece. All the other markers are large Arabic numerals. The hands are four, though they could seem like five, since the 24 hour clock or GMT time, depending on how we use it, has two sides, differentiated by colours. A white one indicates uh, 00 to 12, and the other orange one that marks 12 to 24. The very slim, shaped like an airplane on each side, which I think gives it a very cool and casual touch to the dial. The hours and minutes are in the same form of a sword. The minute one is longer, and they also partially covered that with luminescent paint. The one for the seconds is very fine and pointed, white to the centre and black on the counterweight. On the left side of the dial we see the hemispheres of the 24 hour clock in the same colours as the hands. White for before the meridian and orange for post meridian. In reality they are slightly larger than hemispheres but I think that asymmetry is well thought out and makes it look much more attractive. To the right of the dial we see the brand name at 2 o'clock and the EcoDrive logo and motto that distinguishes citizen sundials at 4 o'clock both in white. Another part for the watch that stands out is the Rihot, where we see those two rings full of numbers and initials. The bottom one, the one that touches the dial, is for the conversion of miles to kilometres, and the top one that touches the bezel has the same numerical scale and is for converting gallons to litres or pounds to kilograms. To facilitate these calculations, the upper ring rotates through the crown that we have two, at two o'clock. It's bi-directional, very easy to operate. As a whole, the dial seems outstanding to me. On one hand it's sober because the black and white around it, although here I have to say that the dial is not black as it seems, but a very dark graphite grey. But you only perceive that under sunlight, which also makes a beautiful uh, litmus effect. The white markers and numbers are especially that orange colour in different parts of the dial as well as the strap, give it that cheerful and casual touch that in my opinion looks really good on it. To frame the whole, a shiny black ceramic bezel with a slanted pattern on the side, just like the one on the crowns, although in this case it's merely aesthetic because the bezel does not rotate. What rotates is the inner ring as I mentioned before. The crowns are not threaded, as would be mandatory in a self-respecting diver, but I think that with this, Citizen wants to make it clear this isn't a diver, it's an aviator. Other parts of the watch that stand out is the faceted case that frames the perfect circumference of the bezel so well. It is brushed for the most part, except for the top of the lugs and the crown protectors where it's polished. 
If we see the watch from its sides on the left side, we appreciate its balanced harmony, and also that contrast between the brushing of the case and the shine of the ceramic. The right side, on the other hand, is totally asymmetrical, and we can see how they have worked to integrate the crown protectors into the case with different facets and finishes to show that love for detail that we also appreciate in the plane of the crowns. The one of the two is polished, and the one of the three is satin, highlighting the brilliant ProMaster logo. On the back of the watch, we can see the screw cap finished in radial brushings that also achieves an iridescent reflection. In the centre, there is a laser engraved globe with the brand name and the EcoDrive motto. On the outermost part of the cover, we can see different references and nomenclatures typical of this watch. And what else can I say about this piece? Well, it has me completely surrendered to its beauty, its quality. Another Japanese piece giving you more than you would expect. Now, let's see the measurements and specifications of this Nighthawk. The model reference is BJ7138-04E. It's equipped with an eco drive movement, calibre B877, which according to Citizen is accurate to about 15 seconds per month. The diameter of the case is 42mm, the thickness 12.8mm, the lug to lug is 46.8mm and the lug distance is 22mm. It is a mineral glass crystal, the bezel is ceramic and the case is stainless steel, the strap leather. And I don't think we have much more to say about this Citizen Eco Drive ProMaster Nighthawk GMT, which promises as much satisfaction as its name is long. At the moment, what they have already achieved, the watch and my children's parts for giving me a quartz of this quality, is to break all the schemes totally of them. By the way, to finish, I have to say that this piece is not easy to find in Europe. Apparently at the moment it has only been launched in Asia and America, and in fact does not appear on the official website of the brand in Spain. It's not known if this is because of the difficulties they've had due to the pandemic, or if it's not finally going to be released here. Either way, you can find it online for around $330. It's uh, much easier to find in dollars. So, with nothing more, so far, the review of this wonderful piece of the EcoDrive ProMaster Nighthawk. And now, we'll continue with World Clocks. 1216. Is there life in watchmaking beyond Japan, Switzerland and Germany? The answer is yes, of course there is. And in that case, this firm, Lurch, which means scratch in Spanish. This brand comes from Belarus, makes very nice watches, and at least it seems that way to me. The history of this Minsk watch factory began in 1953, in the heyday of the USSR, and at that time it was the main supplier of civilian watches to the Soviet Union. As its name suggests, it's a precious one-hand watch, to which the only drawback I put is the diameter of the case, which is 37.6mm, small for my wrist, and to facilitate a quick reading of this type of watch requires a little mental reset to understand it, but you quickly understand it because it's very intuitive. If the case were 42, it would be perfect. Uh, it'd be perfect aesthetics and performance. Also. Look how wide it is. It does not seem to reach uh, eight millimeter spectacular. In fact, I think it is the finest watch I have. Super elegant, not only because of its narrowness, but also because of that dial design, which is that, uh, it's, it's as simple as it is beautiful. The price of this Luch One Hand on the brand's website is 60, and there are different dials and straps, but it can also be found on eBay or Etsy for much less. I. I think, in fact, mine, I think it cost around 40 and what you get in return is an amazing watch that's full of charm. The box only has a steel lid with a very attractive decoration with those drawings that I imagine are constellations and that shiny polished finish. The truth is that it's, it's very pretty. The rest of the case is made of brass with a zircon nitrate coating, which I don't know how long it will last, but I've read in forums that it's better not to use it in the summer when we tend to sweat more because of the acidic pH that sweat can affect the metal of the case. The strap 
made of surprisingly good quality leather. Too bad it doesn't have the same colour clasp as the case. The calibre it mounts has only 15 uh, rubies. It does not need more here because it, it lacks a second hand. And though they advertise a 38 hour reserve mark, it's actually 31. At least mine doesn't have any more than that. It beats at... 21,600 vibrations per hour and its precision is from minus 30 to plus 45 seconds per day. I can attest to this that they are not lying. Mine gains about 30 seconds a day. It's a manual lift, as I've already said, and that gives it a special charm. And it also sounds like the old clocks that you'd hear your grandfather from meters away when he was winding it, because this one too sounds loud and very pleasant. The glass is completely flat mineral, which also contributes to the fineness of the piece. According to the brand, this precious luch uh, suggests an idea to its owner, dominate time, but do not submit to it. And the truth is that I couldn't agree more with that slogan. Manual watches and more, these with a single hand, make you feel time in another way, as if you dominate it in some way that I can't quite explain. It's one of the watches in my collection that has given me the greatest satisfaction to buy and I only regret that they don't make it with uh, higher quality materials and larger uh, Bomino type. Then it would be a perfect watch. Even being as it is with these logical shortcomings for the price, it's a piece full of magic and charm that produces a lot of satisfaction. And now I think we just have to explain how one hand clocks are read for those who don't know. I think it's a curiosity that can interest any watch lover. The first thought, accustomed as we are to the two hands, is how the hell does that work? It seems very complicated, but once the shock of something like that breaks our schemes is overcome, you look at it carefully and you'll immediately perceive that it's something super intuitive. The clock is divided into three types of indices. The long ones that mark the hours as a normal clock, the medium ones which divide the lengths of an hour into four 15 minute parts, and the short ones which divide the 15 minute media into three parts. That is, they are the equivalent of five minutes. So, the only difficulty is getting your brain used to change, which it does very quickly because I'm already saying it's super intuitive, much more so than the two needles uh, that I had a hard time understanding as a child. Of course, the negative thing, especially in a box with a small diameter like this is, that it's very difficult to know the exact time. You work with plus or minus a minute or two with the naked eye, since specifying more is very complicated because the markers are so small. So take that into account in a little more space than a minute mark in a two-hand clock in that we have 15 minutes, which lets us see, like I said, that it can be complicated, but I assure you, it's, it's not. In fact, it's the one that I use the most, and curiously, it has been the cheapest mechanical in my collection. Of course, as long as you don't need British punctuality in your uses or customs. And that's it for now. I hope you liked the video, and if so, please give it a like, give it a share, give it a subscribe. Your collaboration, your input is what helps us to keep growing. And thank you very much, and we hope to see you at the next video. Bye for now.